Good morning, students. This is our lesson for, as you can see, uh, probability and data management, uh, grade 7, lesson 10, circle graphs. <coughs> so we're going to be working on uh, circle graphs, pie graphs, and these sorts of things in the future. A couple things we want to know about circle graphs, as is written here. Um, every single circle graph is always um, drawn and committed into 100 equal parts because we think of it as percentages. Um, when we do this type of work, it's important for us to understand how do we get percentages in the first place and then how do we draw it in um, correctly. Okay, so as you can see, this circle graph, if you add up all these pieces together, you'd eventually equal 100%. Um, you can also note that there are small little indentations right here. Every um, larger indentation, um, so each one of these is going to represent um, 10. And it's going to start with one, two, three, four, five. So the little guys are five, and then you go to the bigger guys, which are more bold, and that's 10. So it should be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and then you keep going around. Okay, so little guys, every, one, every little guy is five, every little tiny guy is one, and then the bolder guys are every 10, just to make it easier for you to count. So looking at these questions, um, we can just do a simple matter of, sorry, it's straight on my thing, but it's not straight on this thing. There. Um, we can just do a, a simple matter of just counting how many dots does each one represent. At the end of this, it should always equal 100 because there are 100 dots on here, and every percentage is always 100 or out of 100. Okay. Um, if we keep breaking our way down, um, we can start seeing when people make errors. So something like this, if we were to do some rough math and add this all together, it's likely going to come too high of a number because remember, every circle graph is always made up of a hundred specific percent, right? So you can't have more than a hundred percent. You can't have less than a hundred percent. That's what makes a hundred percent a hundred. Okay. Now, how do we actually find, um, the actual value of a percentage? Well, what we can do is we want to figure out, well, what's my overall number of how many people are participating in an activity? So for this question, um, we can look at Cali school. So how many grade seven students did Cali survey? Well, we want to figure out how, how many people are all together. So this is 10 plus 20, which is 30, plus 140, which is 170 plus 30. So there's 200 people all together in Cali survey. How many did Bilal um, survey? We have 20 plus 15, so that's 35. 40, 50. Okay, so these are two very nice numbers, obviously. Um, and what we can do from here now is we can start saying, okay, well, let's actually figure out what the actual percentages is. So let's look at music. Um, there's different types of music here. And what we're going to focus on is classical music. So this is the example. They're asking, um, we want to find how many grade seven students like classical music in Cali school as a percentage. So what we're going to do is we're going to find classical school up here, which is 10, or classical music, sorry. So 10 is going to go in the top number. And then how many students I have overall is my bottom number. Okay, so it's 10 over 20, or sorry, 10 over 200. Now we can simplify this fraction. We can divide both these numbers by two. That's what they did. And that's going to give me five over 10, which is equal to 5%. Another method you could do, if you'd like to, is we have 10 over 200. And we just figure out what does that divide to. So that's going to equal 0 0.05. And then this number right here, if we'd like to find what it is as a percent, if you know your, if, if you feel comfortable with your decimals, you could just say, okay, well, this is 5% because I have, um, this is 0 0.05, or sorry, 0 0.05, which is 5 hundredths, which is also known as 5%. Or you can multiply this number by 100, and it's going to give you 5 Okay, so you can do either method. Both of these numbers, if you'd like them to equal 5%, it makes it nice and easy. Okay, but that's how you would do these types of problems. Okay, so you need to figure out first how many people are all together. And I need to put whatever I'm being specific about at the top, how many people are all together in this survey or in this question, and that's going to give me a percentage. Now from there, um, if you were able to figure this out, this, sorry, this part up, you should be able to find the percentages. You should be able to do this part pretty easily because remember, every little tiny um, little tiny dot is one, every larger line is five, and every bold line is 10, okay? So we could be able to do this pretty quickly as they do in the classical section, okay? So let's see um, now what is slightly different about this one. 
So how many pieces do we have all together? So let's figure that out. Now they they actually showed us. Um, if you look on here, there is information that's already telling us how many people they um, how many people are asked already. Um, so if you look over here, this bottom number fraction. The only way they're able to come to the percentage is if they figure out what the how many people altogether were asked, right? So we have 16 plus 4, that's 20, plus 12 is 32, plus 8 is 40. So altogether, there were 40 people that are asked, and now we can actually start figuring out, okay, so let's go from here and see how to do this. Now what they're showing us how to do this, which is, it works, is you go from a percentage, or sorry, from a fraction, uh, to a simplest fraction and then turn into a percent. You could also just do the percent fraction by just dividing out, um, but their method works too. So we look like we're doing four over 40. And what's that? Both these numbers can be divided by four. So we put one over 10, right? And now what is one over 10 as a percentage? Well, we times both of these by 10 and that gives us 10 over 100 which equals 10%, right? And that's what they're asking us to do. And then we'd have to create our table from there. So I hope this was helpful. I hope uh, this page goes well. I would recommend doing, um, I really don't think that this is a terribly, terribly challenging page. If you'd like to, you could maybe skip um, maybe number two, but I would probably do all of them, okay? So this is all, right? Hope you have a wonderful day.